Morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Webby Sports Roundup here in the south and sunshine of Tenerife in my manor, Cario Savaki. What we've got today, we've got big shout outs. What else have we got? We've got the usual rugby league playoff final, rugby union, the World Cup, boxing from Johnny Goggles, City Tenerife update, uh, a little bit of cricket news, snooker, horse racing, and one or two other bits. So stay tuned to Webby Sports Roundup. Right, this is what we do every week. First and foremost, I like to do shout outs. People that watch the programme, they like little shout outs saying, my me, me son's birthday is bam, bam, bam. Anyway, first and foremost, there's a lovely couple called Joe and Carol, residents in Kalosovaki. Now, he watches the show every single week and other bits and pieces, but never puts a mention on or, or say any comments. So this week, I thought you, Joe, I thought I'd give you a mention, pal. Now, Joe, big Everton fan, always have a talk in Monte Cristo. And Carol, his beautiful wife, is a big Leeds United fan. So last year when Everton and Leeds, yeah, Leeds went down, Everton stayed up, there was a bit of confliction. But Joe, Carol, thanks for watching the show, mate. And I'll see you later on for a nice little sherbet. Right, second one is a young boy called Connor Mullins, 15 years of age this week. Not sure when his birthday was. I'm not sure if he came over, and I met him a few weeks ago with his parents, or he came through Facebook from Foggy. Foggy says, a young man, can you give him a mention on this week's show? So, Connor, happy birthday, big man. I hope you got everything that you wish for. Right. Um, I was in the Orshoes in midweek. England against Italy in a qualifier. And there's some lovely Danish boys, if you pardon the expression. Four lads with their two dads. And, they're absolutely, and they subscribe to me, all of them, absolutely on the money. And they're from Bromby. And I said, if you watch the show this week, I'll give you a mention. So, the Bromby boys... From Denmark, there's your shout out. See you again soon, big boys. Right. The Wednesday walk, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. And we'll have another and we'll have a little bit later on next week or something. Because it's all charity lately, isn't it? Anyway, listen, what I'm gonna do, I've adopted two non-league football clubs. And we're gonna mention them every single week. Something of a difference. We've got to sometimes forget the premiership, championship, div one, div two. Because there are lots of supporters and lots of ex-players and so forth outside of the Football League. Now, the first one we all know, Hendon Football Club, OK? My pal Ian Allison, ex-Arsenal, scored against Liverpool in the FA Cup semi-final. It's his son, Lee. He is the manager of Hendon Football Club. And he kindly asked his dad, I think 12 months ago, Dad, do us a favour, come and help us. Um, make it a bit more professional, a bit of advertising, things of that sort of nature, and that's what he does. So he goes there a few days a week, and Hendon are a cracking little club. Don't get a big following, hopefully you might get one or two more following them. This last week or so, they, uh, well, they, they lost to Hungerford 3-0 last week, but in the London Senior Cup, they turned over Glebe by six goals to one, and they're in the Southern Premier League. So to lean Ian, you're doing a great job. Right, the other one. We're going to follow Chatham Town every week as well. Ex-Pat, ex-West Ham, used to live over here. He was here a couple of weeks ago for a jolly. Lovely, lovely fella called Talk. He loves the non-league. When he comes over again, I'll interview him. Didn't have time last time. Anyway, he follows Chatham Town every week. Now, they're second in the league. I've put the tables of Hendon and the tables of Chatham above us, so you will see how they're doing. Now, they drew with uh, Carl Shorten 2-2 last week. The crowd, 1,758. That's phenomenal. That takes me back to the days when I was a kid, 8, 9, 10. Watched Gloucester City, the Tigers. Um, they were red and white then, if I remember. Now they play in black and yellow. And I used to watch them against Tombridge, Bexley, Heath, Ashford Town. All those sort of clubs come into fruition from many, many moons ago. So it's great watching the long league. So look at 1,758. That's a great turnout. During the week, they played at Margate away. Only 408 at Margate down in Kent. And they lost 2-0. But the second in the league, they're in the Isthmian Premier League. So tell, keep on going, mate, and send me some comments. And you can see the league table above us when Tim puts it up. Which we put it up ASAP. Right. But the Rugby League, 
I love me rugby league. I've always been a St. Helens fan. Never watched them play since Eddie Waring from the days when I was 10, 15. And up, up and, and under. Up it's an up and under. That's what it was, Tim. Honest to God. Saturday afternoon, always had a game. And I loved him. Absolutely loved it. And I picked St. Helens. Why, who knows? The red V, neck in white, superb. Anyway. They lost in the semi-finals, but the final last week at Old Trafford was between Wigan and the Catalans. Now, don't forget, the Catalans were top of the table for most of the season. And they drifted right at the end and ended up Wigan 10, Catalans 2. They had a bad start, but a few injuries, and they picked up and picked up. They did the business. 10-2. Tompkins, ex-Wigan, who was Man of Steel, if I remember, 2012 um, there's a new Man of Steel called Bevan French now that they talk about Man of Steel being one of the hardest men the fairest men great tackler just does everything for charity and one of you so he was a Man of Steel and you can see that above me on my left hand side in a link so well done to Wigan for beating the Catlands by 10 points to 2 listen the next sport if you're not into rugby union you haven't lived some people call it egg chasers and what have you. Let me tell you something. I'm a Gloucester boy, Brennan born. And when you're a Gloucester boy, you follow rugby. You have to. And it is one of the hardest games of sports you will see. Believe me, we're talking 15, 20, 20-odd 20 stone people running at you. It is unbelievable. Right, it's the World Cup in France. Semi-finals this week. But last week saw four quarter-finals. Wales got defeated by Argentina, 17-29. Didn't expect that. I don't think they turned up, to tell you the truth. Ireland played New Zealand. Second best game ever seen in my life. Ireland 24, New Zealand 28. So that was the two favourites. So those two quarterfinals last week, both pushed out of the World Cup. Two are the other two quarterfinals, England, Fiji. England 30, Fiji 24. Don't forget Fiji, 80 to 1 outsiders to win the World Cup. England were 14. So a fantastic game. They held on and they won 30 24. They're in the semis. And the biggest game and the hardest game and the best game I've ever seen in my life. And most people I spoke to after that game said exactly the same. France 28, the host. Favourites with Ireland, they were 3 to 1. South Africa 29, 1 point. First half, six tries in half an hour. One of the best games, if the best game of rugby I've ever seen in my life. Just phenomenal. They must have had bruises from top, top to toe, or head to foot, whatever you want to say. Unbelievable. Hardest nails they were. So, right. Now, two semi-finals. Tonight, eight o'clock, Argentina, New Zealand, and England, South Africa, Saturday night, eight o'clock. You still think New Zealand, South Africa final? But listen, it's a game of rugby, 15 against 15. Then you've got, obviously got the substitutes, so who knows? So good luck to England, good luck to South Africa, New Zealand and Argentina. Three changes for England from last week, I'm going to tell you. Smithy who plays number 10 for Harlequins. Bit small, he played number 15, fullback. He's been replaced by Freddie Stewart. He's a big six foot two lad, they need that for when, the, you know, when that big kick's coming over. And Joe Marler and George Martin come back into the pack. So good luck to the boys. Right. Stop talking for two minutes. What we're going to do, Johnny Goggles, he was on his jollies last week. He's come back this week. I think he's had his barnet done like mine. I know it's been short, but it looks, it looks a bit shorter. So he's going to talk to you for the next couple of minutes about the boxing from last week and this week. Johnny, take it away, please, big man. Hello, everyone. I'm Johnny Goggles, and this is Webby's Boxing Roundup. Last week, I mentioned crossover bouts and YouTube boxing. There was a Misfits card on last Saturday in Manchester with KSI taking on Tommy Fury and Logan Paul taking on Dylan Dennis. So I sat down with my sons who watched the majority of the card, but I only managed to watch the Tom Tommy Fury KSI bout. It had the usual dramatic ring entrances and the legend Michael Buffer as the ring announcer. I was one of the people who, who thought Tommy Fury would knock out KSI, as he is the more experienced boxer, however he didn't succeed. KSI went straight into a sideways stance, bouncing up and down, looking like he was doing star jumps, popping out his jab and connecting quite a bit. Tommy seemed off balance a bit to me, 
and had to resort to the clinch when leaning forward. And this is what has started this debate off about the scores. Whilst in the clinch, it's normal to get a few digs in, but Tommy Fury kept hitting KSI behind, behind the head. After being warned and he kept doing it, he had a point deducted. Now the bout went the distance and went to the judges' scorecards. All judges scored it 57-56. However, one of the judges' scores was incorrectly announced at 57-57. The winner was announced as Tommy Fury. This has caused a bit of a debate as a lot of people feel KSI won due to Tommy having the point deducted. This week we have two cards coming from the UK. Firstly, live on DAZN from the Echo Arena Liverpool, we have Jack Catterall defending his WBA Intercontinental Super Light title against Jorge Linares. I can't see past Catterall on this one. He's a boxer that I really like. After that crazy bout against Josh Taylor, last year he came back with a victory against Dara Foley, whereas Linares has suffered defeat in his last three outings. However, they were against Hamazarian, Abadulef and Devin Haney. And live on Sky Sports from your call, Bethnal Green, London, we have the undefeated Mikhail Lowell versus Isaac Chamberlain for the British lightweight, sorry, British cruiserweight title. This has been pushed up to the main event as the bout between Joshua Bratsari and Dan Aziz have been postponed due to Aziz picking up an injury this week. Boxer promoter Ben Shalom apparently is trying to get this bout rescheduled as soon as possible. And let's hope it can be done as it's a bout I can't wait to see. Both are friends and former training partners. That's it for me for this week. I'll be back next week with more boxing news and fight coverage. Don't forget, if you like what you see and like what you hear, please like and subscribe to Webby's Sports Roundup from sunny, sunny Tenerife. And it's free. Johnny, thanks big man. Thanks for all the information. You certainly know your stuff, don't you? Absolutely top man. Johnny Goggles will be back on next weekend. Cheers, son. Right. Over a little bit of cricket. Um, I'm not going to go too much on cricket because I've got my Rover reporter, Wagsy, will be on in a couple of weeks' time. It's the World Cup finals over in India. Okay, 10 countries and big round robin. England poor at the moment. They've only won one in three. They lost to Afghanistan during the week. But the main man, the captain, has been out injured. But he's in this week. So hopefully we can turn the form around. Um, and we're playing South Africa tomorrow morning at 9.30. So Ben Stokes, captain, number one player in the world. As far as I'm concerned, get it sorted. Let's get two from four. And we'll have Wagsy on in a couple of weeks' time when he gets a bit closer to who's going to the quarterfinals. Right, now we're going to go over to my pal, CD Tenerife. Yeah, he's the main man. Thanks for doing a bit of a walk on uh, Wednesday, my son, for our, my charity walk. Chris Todd, the general. Let's see what's happening with CD Tenerife. I think another good resort. Take it away, Toddy. Welcome, everyone, to Webby Sports Roundup in the shadow of the Eliodoro Stadium in Santa Cruz with the news that Tenerife drew their first game of the season after 11. It was on the cards. A fair result away to Mirandes. Uh, before that, we'd uh, won seven and lost three out of the 10 matches. So a draw was on the cards and we were one nil down after just over a minute. Bit of a, a defensive mix-up really. But we got back into it, showed some spirit, 1-1, one, one, second half. Sorry about that, they're doing some work here at the stadium, so uh, uh, they're smashing and crashing about. And we drew 1-1 at the end, fair result as I said. And uh, this Saturday, the second division has thrown up some massive matches just by chance really. First against second, third against fourth, fifth against sixth. We're play, playing Levante there third, we're fourth and um, bring it on. We're really struggling with injuries at the moment. We have eight injured and the heart of defence is the main worry. Uh, look like Williams has come in, youngster, and done really well. Uh, he's the only fit centre half so we're relying on him until the other reinforcements get get the uh, brought in January transfer window and maybe one or two back from injury in the next uh, couple of months but it's looking grim on that side of things but everything uh, the club's 
bouncing at the moment so let's hope with the the fans it could be a sellout this Sunday this Saturday sorry at half past five against Levante so let's see but subscribe to Webby Sports channel and uh, boom vamos Tenerife cheers Toddy superb but the league is going to be up there uh, as you'll see Tim's going to put that up so you can see exactly where we, where Tenerife is they've got a 1-1 draw as Toddy just said so we're flying but we've got a few injuries so tomorrow well this weekend's game is going to be a massive one Levante you know they're in form right snooker very very quickly on the snooker I know there's one or two snooker people Big Stu from Shelfer good pal of mine uh, loves your snooker and loves rocking Ronnie O'Sullivan but um, he went over to um, uh, to Wuhan this week and um, lost 5-1 to a novice I think what happens is he plays when he wants to and if he don't want to he knows he's still going to be number one even losing that I think Judd Trump uh, won the final and um, he is still number one in the world and ranking number one so he's got the money he's got the skill he's 47 years of age not like these kids coming through at 2025 so uh, Rocket Ronnie absolute quality right on the bottom it says Webby turn the page over so that's what I'm doing time for it are we going to get a winner or not Ash it keeps messing me it's time I think we've had three or four losers on the bounce now so it's getting a bit tight now with your fiver or your tenner every week but I still think we've got a small profit but it's a bit of fun isn't it it's a bit of fun we enjoy it right he was on his jollies this week but he still sent me a message. Got to get me bins out. This is what Lee Sobot have sent me. I'm on my holidays, mate, but I've still got time to send you a couple of GGs. Right, tomorrow, Saturday, 4.25 Ascot, Docklands. It's about six years. You might be able to get sevens other places each way. Just do it each way. He just says on the nose, just to be on the safe side, each way, Docklands. It's in, it's in a big handicap. Also, what he likes is Jackie O in the 225 at Ascot, and that's second favourite, that's about fours. So basically, you've got 425 Ascot, Docklands, 225 Ascot, Jackie O, and about four to one, second favourite. Thank you, uh, Lee Sobot, for that big man. Let's see if we can get a winner. Got two chances, haven't we? Right. We're going to finish off now, boys and girls. Thanks for everybody that watches and all the views. Really, really appreciate it. Um, a little bit quick news on the auction site. I think a lot of people are waiting till the end. And I've had a couple of phone calls from a couple of good friends of mine says, when's the auction finishing? So we finish on the last day of November. So you can still get lots of bids in. As more people watch, then more people will probably make a bid. There's some great prizes on there. All you have to do is go to Timothy Dowd, D -O -W -D dot com forward slash webby have a look then you will see all the descriptions down below then you will see all the items rocket ronnie also of a snooker cube signed and a picture you've got uh frankie the tory signed photographs you've got frankie you've got um ronnie o'sullivan signed photographs as well you got uh, from um my leads man um uh, what's his name tim remember his name rig it was it the ball? yeah yeah was it what's his name Rigor Mortis, that's it, Rigor, Rigor Mortis, double bubble here. Rigor, thanks Rigor, we've got Leeds United football. Yeah, yeah, oh, he loves his bikes, loves his motorbikes. You're good for that, aren't you? Is it, Tim, is it, is it a picture? Is it, is it television or what? He's doing that to me, he's doing I'm that. I'm tell you there's a book about TT races. Oh, oh, and oh, sorry, there's a book about TT races, I forgot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we've had a bid for that as well, so that's superb. Just looking down on the beach. Don't look. Oh, don't look, don't look, it make your eyes water, that's for sure. Um, what else have we got, Tim? I'm trying to think what else have we got. We got the shirts. Oh, we got the shirts. We got the Hopley uh, from Wagsy. Superb. And he, he had four wickets last week. We've got that other shirt, um, Chunks. Chunks, he's a big YouTuber man, isn't he? Big YouTuber. Yeah, but we're waiting for a photo from Ian Allison just to confirm authenticity. So, listen, you make a bid and we will make sure we get it to oh, you. the big Gaza shirt. Oh, and the big Gaza shirt. Oh, hey, yeah, but we want 500 for that. Somebody... I've been told it's possibly going to make a bid for that and I'm going to keep that very, very quiet. So that's, you know, all framed. We'll make sure we get that to you by Christmas. So you've got a, so you've got a prezi for your, your granddad, your auntie, your sister, your uncle, your son. Think about it, OK? Make a bid. TimothyDow.com forward slash Webby. Um, 
Don't forget, we've got a Facebook page. I've got to, I've got to mention Foggy, top man, drinks in the Oakwood, Leon C. He's been a bit caught on busy this week. Next week, he's going to be um, very, very busy. We've picked up a lot of new followers on Facebook. We've gone from there to there. So if you want to follow me on Facebook, Tim and Foggy and everybody else, my uh, Webby Sports Roundup, you just, what do they do, Tim? They just go to Webby Sports Roundup? It's uh, called facebook.com. Facebook.com. Slash. Slash. Webby Boom. Webby Boom, that's it. Go on to that and uh, join. That's all you got to do. It's for free, isn't it? And you can see what we're all doing and what up and coming events we've got between now and Christmas. Um, the walk, I'm going to go through it very, very quickly because I don't want to bore with you all the time. We had a fantastic sponsored walk. We've done two. September the 12th, October the 18th on Wednesday. Weather was beautiful. Uh, a date is not named yet for November. But the one on Wednesday, I want to thank very, very quickly. Uh, we've uh, From Damo in the, in the gang at the Market Tavern, I want to thank... Uh, but Alex at... Uh, Goodfellas. Goodfellas, thank you. I want to thank Mick at... Um, no, that was after. I want to thank Mick at... Um, Yordis, which the video never came out. Sorry, Mick, I'm making up to you, big man. Lovely, lovely fella. Uh, he opened up personally for us in the morning because it is a pub on Veronica's. His good lady wife passed away a few months ago and I never met him before till last month. Lovely, lovely fella. So if you're in the area of Veronica, Yordis, a lovely little sports bar in the corner. Then we end up with, oh, then we end up with Dave, Dave and his pal, two brothers there. Derby County fans at HG1, had a couple of drinks in there, and then we finished up at Mark Raglan in the Hopping Grapes. We had a cracking afternoon, it really, really was. Uh, then, I got a, then I got a lift home. But the ones, other ones I want to say thank you to is the ones from Kalislovakia that turned up. To Julie and Erin, I think it, it's her niece. She came on the Wednesday, fantastic. To my boys that I went on a taxi with, with Dave Hole. All right, Dave, Dave, yeah. Um, Smithy, thanks, Smithy, as always. And uh, Big Jim Donaldson. That's the gang from us. There's lots more to say, thank you, but I can't. I don't got to. Toddy came there. And, oh, hey, hey, Johnny, Jackie. Oh, Jackie, listen, at the, at the apartment, in your wheelchair, listen, I cannot thank you enough. And you know, at the end of the uh, last video I did, then I thank you. Thank you, Johnny. I'll have a drink with you. Right, okay, that's it. Tim, we're ready to go up for a coffee. Uh, Orcus Whaling and Dom. Oh, oh this is, I just said this, we had 30, there's 50, there's there's 30, 50 strong. Yeah, obviously, yeah, Dom, Dom. Uh, and his message from Portugal. Uh, sorry, Dom. Uh, but listen, you just, I just can't mention everybody. We haven't got time, have we? They were the biggest donators. Dom, Dom, they were the biggest donators. Yes, they were. And also, don't forget, I'll tell you, who put a big 50 in? Great. Kevin, the Kevin the Scotsman. Kevin the Scotsman. Hope you arrived home safe uh, today, mate. Oh, yesterday, I think. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you very, very soon. Right. That's it now. So don't forget, Facebook down below. If you like what you hear, you like what you see, my usual bit, subscribe to Webby Sports Roundup. And it is free. Gratis. OK. Cost you nothing. See it down below. Any comments down below as well. And if you've got a birthday for anybody, uh, just put it on the Facebook page, send a comment to me, Tim, or whatever, you, and I'll do it all for you next week, OK? So I'm finished now. I'm going to have a coffee. Good luck to England the weekend. Good luck to the two horses. And thank you, Tim, my chief bottle washer, my director, my cameraman, and my producer. Get it in there. Have it, my son. I did it straight away. So from me, Webby, and from me, big, get out of it. And from me, big, get out of it, you muppet. And me, big pal, Tim. Let's go have a coffee. Take care. Love you loads. And I'll see you soon.